Hi there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2. Last time, we were having our meeting um, about, you know, what we should be doing as a class and all that kind of good stuff, and then of course we said we're going to do the third way, because this is a JRPG. Then, in the midst of all that, Vita appeared, and all of a sudden, Ymir was under attack by pretty much all of Ouroboros and the Noble Alliance. The kind of shocking thing was, was that Rufus, uses his brother, is actually on the Noble Alliance's side. So, unfortunately, Eustace has to fight his brother. Also, Crow appeared, and Reen had to fight him too. But after all that happened, um, Duke Cayenne here decided to invite Reen aboard his airship, the Pantagruel, and, and see if he can't convince Reen to actually join the Noble Alliance himself. So, I wonder what Reen's going to decide. Reen Schwarzer. Truth be told, we don't want this war to drag on any more than you do. Uh, really? We only acted as we did, due in part to our dearly departed Chancellor's behavior being far too unreasonable to justify turning a blind eye. He garnered the trust of His Majesty, and in turn misused that trust. He flagrantly disregarded this nation's beloved culture and traditions, treating Erebonia as if it were his own personal property. Surely you too noticed this. Well... I can't say that he's wrong there. No kidding. Yeah, the people didn't really seem to like him. I mean, they called him the Blood and Iron Chancellor, for God's sakes. And, yeah, he created the Imperial Liberation Front. But as I said, the cause of our nation's ills is now gone. Now, all that remains is to turn back the hands of time just a touch, and the good old days of the Empire will be upon us once more. The key to this bright future lies in putting aside our differences and joining hands. Am I wrong? I'm afraid that yes, you are. Do you honestly believe that people can so easily put aside their differences after all the Alliance has done? You occupied Heimdall and effectively took every one of its citizens hostage, imprisoned the Imperial family. And let's not forget how you're now in league with the enemy nation responsible for the destruction of Gorelia Fortress. After all that, the Imperial army would never bow their heads to the likes of you, even if the rest of the population did. <laughs> My word, I'm afraid there's been a terrible misunderstanding. The Imperial family is simply under our loving protection. They certainly haven't been imprisoned. But that does bring me to exactly why I want you to help us. It does? The Azure Knight is already on our side. But if we had your Ashen Knight as well, that would mean we'd have two of the great knights of Erebonian legend to put into play. Couple them with our Panzer Soldats, and the Imperial Army's armored divisions would cower before us. You may not find us winning the war ideal, but this union benefits everyone more than carrying on until our inevitable victory, hmm? I don't think it's that simple. I beg to differ. The presence of Soldot's units on a battlefield makes a tremendous difference. What they may lack in firepower and armor compared to tanks, they make up for in mobility and versatility. But more important than even those factors is the psychological impact they have on our opponents. Well... We're only human. As such, we are as captivated as we are terrified of giant beings bearing human form. And if that holds true even for mass-produced soldats made with modern technology, it will be all the more true for the divine knights of legend you and Crow possess. Can't argue with that logic. <sighs> I will say it once more. Giliath Osborne is dead. And with his death, all that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant Academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. <gasps> Are you trying to? Whatever you ultimately decide, their safety is guaranteed. I would ask that you promise him this, if nothing else, Your Grace. <laughs> oh, 
But of course, I'm not a monster. Rufus. We may stand on opposite sides of this conflict, but I still sit on Thor's board of directors. And in that capacity, I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer. Wow, Reen really does have quite the decision to make here. <sighs> I mean, the Duke does have some good points as far as just wanting to, you know, end the war. But, you know, you don't want to end the war just to let somebody win, just to get it, you know, out of the way. You want to end the war, but feel good about yourself. You know, there has to be a purpose for the war. All these people didn't fight and die for nothing, just so Rain can go and negotiate and go out and slaughter everybody with their two little soul dance of legend and everything. Speaking of which, um, someone in the comments, Ivan, told me that there's actually seven legendary Divine Knights. I don't know where he got that number, but sounds good to me. So there's five more that we can uh, potentially find. I don't know if we'll see them in this game or if they're going to be in the sequel. I have no idea. This airship's really nice. Look at this. How are they growing flowers indoors? It's kind of strange. There's not really any you know, natural light there or anything. It's just kind of odd. And I liked how Duke Hayen was like, uh, they're under our loving protection. <laughs> All that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant Academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer. You know, this really is an agonizing decision for him because he could potentially end the war right now. But, I mean, all the commoners would be, you know, any kind of rights that they had before this war would just be pretty much gone. They'd be like no better than like the Russian serfs. I mean, it would be horrid. But he could rescue his sister and the princess and everybody else too. Keep racking your brain like that and smoke will start coming out of your ears. And who are you? Oh, hey, Crow! What's going on? Hey, now. No need to give me that look. I figured I was gonna find you busy thinking everything over like your life depended on it. And what do you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Reen does tend to get a little bit melodramatic. <laughs> oh, yeah, Reen's pretty pissed. Can't blame him, though. <laughs> it's tough being popular. If you joined us, I could get away with doing half the work I am now. So come on, stop freaking out about it so much and make a choice. Uh, yeah, I don't think that he can make a choice that easily. It's not like, you know, he's not as flippant as you are. Oh, lunch. Hey, hey awesome. Grub, of course. Kinda early, but I brought you your lunch. Got the and fate of the you... world in my hands, but sure, let's have lunch. Wow, we're not eating sushi? Like, this is like the first JRPG that I've seen where they, you know, actually have Western Americanized food. Oh, that kind of food more your thing? Okay then, give me a minute while I go ask the chef to whip something up. Cool. Well, I guess All there right, was that one in. time in Wild Arms where Cecilia was eating hamburgers, but they didn't actually, you know, show the hamburgers or anything, let alone onion rings and fries. Yeah, they're called fish burgers. Oh, pretty good. My right? bad. Fish burgers. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. Oh. Well, glad to hear. Guess it was worth putting my cooking skills Wait, to the test. Wait, Crow cooked all this? Who knew? Was my first time cooking in a while, too. Sharon could probably do better, though. But I wanted to give it a shot anyway. This stuff was like soul food back in Jirai, oh, where I grew up. To think, all the time we spent searching for the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front, and he was right under our noses. Crow Armbrust, from the Jirai SEZ. Huh. 
Oh, yeah. Vita was using some weird thing of hers to let you see what was going on, wasn't she? So I guess you saw what happened. Then. Yeah, we saw what you were doing. Mm. Oh, that's right. Huh. I forgot about that. Well, that's because we... Well, that's because we didn't actually go to Uri. The other group went to Uri. Maybe we'll go there this game. That'd be kind of interesting. I wouldn't hold my breath, though, because I believe that it's in western Erebonia, the Lamar province of Erebonia, and I don't think that we go there in this game. Maybe the next game. Yeah, by pure coincidence. It's changed a lot since I was last there, so it was kind of surreal being back again. But it was nostalgic in its own way, too. Hmm. Well, what's that? Oh, yeah. I mean, you seem so normal. Why are you a terrorist? <gasps> yeah, just tell us. What happened to you? Why are you this way? What's your issue? Why are you so damn fake? <laughs> Where's the fun in prying into a guy's past? Save all that talk for your number one in class. Who's the lucky girl anyway? Elisa? Laura? Emma? Fee? And don't tell me it's Milliam, because, you know, it... Um, you're barking up the wrong tree, Crow. <laughs> don't really swing that way. Yeah, come on. Keep... Quit deflecting, just tell us. You're really serious. Um, you killed a man and you started a war. Of course I'm serious. Tell us why. My past really isn't that big of a deal, you know. It's got nothing on yours, that's for sure. If you find yourself thinking that's all when I'm done, well, I warned you. So, you really want to know? Yeah, and I'm going to be quiet for this little story here. <sighs> Alright, you win. Like I said, it's just your run-of-the-mill sob story. Pick up any history textbook and you'll probably find a dozen others just like it. It's the kind of story that's so common no one bothers to remember it. Like it never even happened. Back in those days, Jirai was known as Jirai City. It was a city-state off the coast of northwest Zemuria that prospered through maritime trade with West Erebonia, North Ambria, and Remiferia. It had a population of around 150,000 people, so it wasn't exactly a big place or anything. Because of that, the surrounding nations left it alone and let us live out our days in peace. We were pretty fortunate, all things considered, until about 20 years ago. That was when the North Ambrian disaster struck, and much of the Principality of North Ambria was turned to salt. And as a result, trade on the Northwest Shore was reduced to virtually nothing. Day after day, Jirai's prosperity started to fade away. Still, it wasn't all bad. We had our fishing, our historic landmarks, our septium mines. We could make use of those to get trade going again, both to keep our state running and to help out North Ambria. In fact, the one who advocated that approach was the mayor, my grandfather. He was the last mayor Jirai City ever had. <laughs> he was a stubborn old bastard, but he had this wry sense of humor and was well loved by everyone. I lost my mom and dad early, so he was also my only living relative. <laughs> He taught me just about everything a guy could know. He was like a mom, dad, and your old master rolled into one, I guess. Anyway, fast forward to ten years ago. Out of nowhere, we received this proposal from the Erebonian government. They said they wanted to extend a railway line from Heimdall all the way to Jirai. We relied on the sea for trade before, but there wasn't any reason to believe we couldn't benefit from being connected to Heimdall by rail. The proposal drew overwhelming support from the city's council. And as a result, my grandfather was forced to accept. Within a year, the city had all of its old life back and then some. The streets were more bustling than ever. But keep in mind, this was a result of huge amounts of imperial capital flowing into the city. Land and buildings we once treasured were bought up left and right. Everything became a target for investment. People only cared about making money. Something similar supposedly happened in Crossbell, too, but unlike there, no opposition existed in Jirai. My grandfather sensed something was off, and he tried what he could to get the situation under control. Then one day, someone blew up the railway line leading to Jirai. Everyone demanded that it be repaired as quickly as possible, 
everyone except the imperial government. Instead, they panned our national security arrangements for being insufficient and threatened to withdraw all imperial capital. The city was left in an uproar like we'd never seen. Shares plummeted, and with no one able to ascertain the culprit's identity, chaos reigned. That was when he showed up. Chancellor Gilliath Osborne, in his third year as representative of the imperial government, personally came to Jirai. We then received a second proposal. The restoration of the railway and its future security will be seen to by the Imperial Army. In return for our continued assistance and safekeeping, Jirai will come under the wing of our glorious empire and attain even greater prosperity as a special economic zone. The timing was too good to be true, really. Realizing this, my grandfather staunchly opposed the idea. He tried everything he could to convince the city's council to reject the offer. Unfortunately, once you taste the sweet fruit of prosperity, it's hard to want to go back. The council, made up of influential merchants and all their greed, jumped at the offer. And tempted by the elimination of customs, together with the tax breaks from being an SEZ, many of the citizens did too. And during all that, they'd conveniently found a suspect behind the railway incident, my grandfather. He loved Jirai more than anyone, and up till then, its people loved him too. And yet virtually overnight, he found himself facing the wrath of both the city's council and the citizens alike. Left with no choice, he resigned from his position as mayor, and Jirai formally became part of the empire. Both of these things happened on the same exact day. That was eight years ago. Naturally, everyone knew my grandfather wasn't the one who did it. They knew who was really responsible. They just turned a blind eye to the truth. See, I warned you, just your run of the mill sob story. One day, he just up and died. Once he resigned, the whole affair with the railway getting blown up was all but forgotten. He lived comfortably in retirement for about half a year, fell ill, and that was that. He just lost the will to go on, I guess. Like I said, he was the only family I had. I mean, I had plenty of friends even then, but I chose to leave it all behind. I was 13 at the time. I wandered the land, doing whatever I had to to get by. That was when I met old Cayenne, who happily indulged my hatred for the Chancellor. And with his financial backing, I went out with the goal to find others who were just like me. That was the beginning of the Imperial Liberation Front. Gideon, Scarlet, and Vulcan were among those I recruited. I had also met Vita then. I only knew her as the woman who would often come to see Cayenne. She guided me to a place below the city of Ordis, and there slept the Azure Knight Ordeen. One after another, I overcame the same trials you did with your friends, but alone. And once I'd proven myself worthy, Ordeen accepted me as his awakener. That was three years ago. I was 16. My preparations complete, I concealed my background and enrolled in a military academy near the capital. Everything I did, I did for the sole purpose of taking the Chancellor's head. Come on now, what's with the face? You look sadder about all this than I do. <laughs> I swear, I'm not trying to tell you the Chancellor was evil or anything. Still, there's no denying that he managed to outwit my grandfather. And he may have lost, but Pops always loved a good gamble. It's thanks to him that I'm pretty good at chess, card games, that kind of stuff. I'd say it's fairly normal for a student to want to avenge his master's defeat, wouldn't you? At the end of the day, there's no denying this country has problems, and the Chancellor's methods were making them worse. I studied those problems, worked out how to use the situation to my advantage, and then won the game with an all-or-nothing gamble. But when you think of how peaceful Jirai is now, I'd say I've got a duty to clear up the mess left behind by my game too, which means ending this war and restoring peace. 
So it's only when that's done that my game is truly over. I don't want whatever your decision is to be influenced by my past, okay? Like Rufus said, you need to think long and hard about what it is you're fighting for. For you, more than anyone else. Anyway, I think I've stuck around here for long enough. You're going to be treated as a visitor. Well, sort of. It's about time for the higher-ups to head back to Heimdall, so go ahead and pass the time however you want. Cool story, but there are some things that I don't really understand. You know, okay, so Chancellor Osborne came to Uri, he essentially took it over, um, made Crow's grandfather take the fall for everything that happened, and then the grandfather died. So, yeah, ultimately, Osborne is to blame for um, his death, yet, shouldn't Crow's hate all of Erebonia? Because it's really the culture, it's really the mindset, it's really the the, um, the politics, the economy, everything of Erebonia, and being around such a huge country that caused this to happen to just, you know, little tiny Uri. So why is he still fighting for Erebonia? If I was Crow, I'd be wanting to destroy the entire, uh, you know, all of Erebonia. There'll be no guards outside your room, so if you want to try and escape, be my guest. Just keep in mind that some members of Ouroboros and Zephyr are on board too. Not to mention me, Scarlet, and Vulcan. So if you're up for a gamble of your own, get ready to take all of us on. Screw that. Can't we just call Valimar and fly away? Although he is kind of tied up. But, I mean, Valimar's strong. Oh yeah, one more thing. There's this real cute visitor in the guest of honor's room on the second floor. I think she'd perk right up if she saw you. So why not go pay her a visit? Just don't go making your girl jealous, okay? Is he referring to Elise or Alfin? I wonder who's here. Huh. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. And we'll find out who it is next time on Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.